I'm your host as always, Objectively Dan. And joining me tonight is the one and only David Worley from the David Worley Podcast. What's going on, David? Hello. Hey. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, wait a minute. I thought Kyle from Nonsec was coming on tonight, and that's true. Uh, Kyle has a fever, and he just let me know about that about two hours ago. Uh, and, you know, th- this stuff kind of happens, right? So I have a retainer list of people I usually go through. But recently, recently, uh, Christy was on David's show, and David did make the comment, yeah, you know, I had Dan on my show one time. He didn't. Ha- he hasn't had me on Truth Wanted yet. So, you know what? I got him on this week, and I'm giving him a hard time, but uh, David's a great guy. Um, he has a, uh, a podcast on YouTube where he gets some pretty big names um, in the community and uh, does interviews with them. It's really nice to have you on here, David. Thank you. Um, I, I do want to clarify. Uh, <laughs> of course you do. Of course you do. As I already have about four times off air. Um, yeah. That, yeah, I, I, I haven't bullied my way on. This is <laughs> half earned. I mean, you're a mod on my channel. This is like there you go. the least you could do. No, 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 no. Dave, I've, uh, I've known David since... That's been a while. I don't know how long it's been. Um, you know, he, he's yeah. been doing his. We've been chugging together on YouTube, you know, um, and uh, where our communities kind of cross paths and stuff. So I'm happy to have David on, uh, and I'm glad to have him on on such short circumstances, especially where he's at. He's in the UK right now, where it's like one o'clock in the morning. So uh, you know, sp- give 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 him some room to like. You know, find his thoughts and stuff, because the later we go on, I'm sure it's going to get a little, his thoughts are going to get a little less coherent, you know, as time moves on. But uh, again, David, I'm, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, kind of tell people who have never seen you before, like, what your show is about and kind of what you're, what you're uh, doing. I was going to say, I'm, I'm already incoherent, so there's no <laughs> hope. Um, I, yeah, I, so I do a channel called DRP. Um, there's going to be a new intro going to be released on Monday that fully elaborates on the uh, the rebrand, as it were. So DRP is the um, the the, like the middle letters of Wally DR podcast, with me being obviously Wally DR and it being a podcast. But it's going to change to DRP standing for Dave Does Religion and Politics, and this is you know just to just to clarify, it's it's something that. I, I find very interesting when I I get, as you've you've already mentioned, a particular famous atheist on, but we already know their views on particular things. What do they think about? Uh, it might be your president. It might be Brexit. It might be to do with something futuristic, um, climate change. You know, all these different uh, people. I I don't know <laughs> how how many how many names should I say before <laughs> you have to sh- shut me up. I mean, I, I will say, like, when you, when I was on your show, I was surprised by the questions you were asking me. I believe you were asking me what my thoughts. Yes, about, you were. <laughs> you were asking me about, like, Brexit and some other stuff. I was like, oh, I'm not ready. My my takes are not hot enough yet. Uh, you know, like, I, I'm so used to, I mean, we talk a little bit of politics here and there on here. But, you know, I'm mostly interested in, in discussions about religion, discussions about conspiracies and discussions about beliefs and what people have and stuff. And, and talking about the other stuff is, is great when I get to it. But, you know, it's not like I wouldn't call it my expertise, right? It's definitely um, not exactly why I, I, I do the things that I do. I mean, it's part of it, but like... Neither I, would I. <laughs> yeah, but like I, I'm glad that you're kind of asking those questions because I think it it's interesting. Like, yeah, I, I would want to know like... Uh, Dan Barker's take on you know some some things going on in our country or stuff and, and you know kind of the guests that you've had on your show so yeah it's, it's a different take on YouTube I, I kind of like it yeah I, I have really struggled to try and frame it properly I I've gone by many sort of monikers in the past so it's trying to make atheists relatable it's trying to get to know them more personally it's about me having conversations with various individuals so I'll, I'll go through them but please stop me after a while sure. uh, i've had people like david fitzgerald aaron ra cosmic skeptic richard carrier objectively dan um Darryl never heard Ray, of dan barker <laughs> uh, <laughs> lloyd evans no illusions scientist mel carl curtis it's everyone you've ever heard of has been on the channel probably apart from the very big names which is quite difficult to um to get in touch with 
So, okay, so tell me this because how, how do you get in touch with all of these people? Like, these are people who, I mean, they're very busy people. Like, I'm, first of all, I'm flattered that I'm even on the list of some of those people, right? But, like, I mean, what's your secret? Do you just, do you have a form that you send to everybody that's just the most enticing thing ever? Like, what do you do? No. <laughs> it most certainly isn't. Whatever you receive, which I, I can't remember what, it must have been an email at some point. It wasn't even Twitter. Um, it, it's, it's really, um, there, there is no secret. It's just catching people at the right moment. Aaron Ra responded within an hour. I, I know he's sometimes very responsive. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can't quite remember somebody who I had maybe last month's, um, I can't remember their names. They were, oh, it might, might've been Phil Ferguson actually. He was just happened to be like, I happened to get him like a week before the, the tax week. Like <laughs> I shouldn't have had him on. <laughs> like he was, he would have been too busy, but um, he was very, he was very kind. We had a really good podcast about um, secular um, finance and, and that sort of thing. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, the thing about Arn is I love Arn, but it, it took him a few times for him to meet me to remember who I was and that uh, that he's actually met me before. I think I think he knows who I am now. I think if Arn walked in the room, he would recognize me. I think it's gotten to that point. But I've met him several times at just several different places that he always forgets. And I get it. Like, he, dude, he meets people, like, every day. Like, that's kind of his thing. But it's just kind of funny. Yeah. He, has, he, he has expressed interest on being on here as well. Um, so we'll have to set that up sometime. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's funny, man. Like, I, I know as – a guy who's making the show here, like, you know, trying to get people on and stuff to me, sometimes it's kind of a hassle. Sometimes, you know, people don't know who you are and stuff like that. And and just seeing the the level of people that you get on is is really interesting to me. Like that's that's a, that's impressive, dude. Like props to you for getting to be able to talk to all these people, you know, um, especially, you know, people who a lot of people look up to and stuff like that. So what I mean, what is it like to like, you know, have a show doing this kind of stuff where you're talking to people? Um, uh, I mean are you asking them the questions that you would want to know the answer to, or are you kind of asking questions you think other people would know? Like, oh, I mean, what's it like just doing that whole process? Yeah, well, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I, there, there's a process where I go but through um, various people's Twitter, like within the past day of, of having them on. So there's something at least relevant. I go through their YouTube channel. If they have one, they might, in some cases... Um, there's, there's people that I know would want to, to, to come on and I don't know enough yet. Like mm. I, I want to randomly stumble upon a, a, an opinion while going through Twitter and being like, ah, I didn't realize that about this person. I'm going to bring that up. I'm going to remember that. Mm. Um, and try and link sort of that view into this view. So you could, you can link things very easily in, into one another, like, uh, the, the, the common one that's going around at the minute is uh, because it's Pride Week, mm. uh, month, sorry, month? Yes, Pride Month. Month, sorry. Yeah, yeah. you can tell I'm straight because I just, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know. I don't even know these things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for the record as well, we I don't think we, um, I don't think we need a, a straight Pride Week. Like, no. Oh, yeah. I, so I, I, I was actually going to bring this up if you weren't. I, have you seen this on Twitter? This the straight pride thing that's happening yeah. in Boston. Oh, it's actually happening. It's not just like well. So I don't know. You saying. know, I, I'm not. I haven't read up to about it. I just saw some headlines. You know, I I haven't seen much more. And, and you know, a few people commenting on it. But just the idea of it, like I. I don't know. As, before we get into this, I just do want to remind people: this is a call-in show. We do have the number on screen. You know, uh, uh, definitely come talk to us about this kind of stuff. But I mean, this is a good topic to kind of segue and maybe talk to about first because I don't know. Because uh, you know, recently on YouTube, you've seen the the Pastor McMurtry thing, um, and uh, you know, Mister Atheist made that video, and they're talking about the Make America Straight Again conference. Uh, that's been happening, and uh, I, I was really going to get into it with Kyle tonight, but, you know, this the straight pride parade thing also, it just, <laughs> it's so silly. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, it, it just really spits in the face of what the, the you know, the LGBT community has really tried for many years to kind of make happen, you know? Like, I, I, I get why people don't like 
pride in some ways, but like I also do think that people take pride for granted in a lot of ways too, right? Like, oh, it's it, this used to not be a thing. Like this, you, you, cops and LGBT people walking together on the street was like not a thing a few years ago, and and uh, it's it's kind of amazing that it, it's even a thing at all. And the straight pride stuff, I don't know, it's just silly to me. Like, you know, it's the people who are privileged to think that they're having their rights taken away from them in some way because it seems like gay people are, are being treated just like everybody else, you know? Yeah, it, it's not really... To, uh, I realize how much of a bubble I live in because we we don't experience such um, uh, antagonism to, towards um, these particular groups in this scale um, that you do. I don't get uh, as much on my feed on on Twitter, for example, if I'm just scrolling through about the UK, it's going to be more to do with Brexit than it is to do with, hey, let's kill lots of people. You know that those those people do exist, obviously, but it's it constantly feels like, if I may say so, I'll word it in a slightly different way. Europe is more developed and is more social. And we're much more open to things like socialism than uh, America, for example. And where, when you get these sorts of incidents coming along, it is it it's very it's shocking, obviously. But I I just didn't realize these people even existed. Mm. You know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm assuming you're talking about people who are just really bigoted towards like lgbt people and stuff is that what you yeah yeah uh, i i definitely don't uh experience that i've obviously i think it'd be different it's a generational thing as well so that i can only assume from the people who i've spoken to people such as ourselves uh christy for example we amongst ourselves it's, it's fine like th there is no issue but when we end up talking about these particular religions and how they have um a lot of uh control and that they it seems like a thing in which they don't really care about the issue too much it's more to do with gaining more control of the situation rather than you know it, it, it seems like a power grab from, well, from I, the outside i the experience that i've seen of it and again i you know my Everyone's experience is going to be very, but most people I know who are against those kinds of things, it's more about keeping the status quo I've seen a lot of times than it is for, like, outright bigotry. The bigotry is still there, and I think it's an underlying thing. Like, I do think people have presumptions and and, um, and um, unconscious judgments, and, and that's where a lot of these decisions kind of stem from in the first place. But it's to the point where it's like, oh, we don't even realize that keeping the status quo in some cases is actually contributing to the bigotry. You see what I mean? Like, um, it was just recently passed here that um, uh, the Equal Rights Act, I think is what it was with the Supreme Court, basically like not – we have a list of things you can't discriminate as an employer, right? And and we just added like LGBT peoples as one of those things. Like you can't discriminate against somebody because they're gay for like hiring them and stuff. And it's like the to some people that's going to be seen as like a hindrance because it's like, oh, this is a, a I used to be able to discriminate against these people and now I can't do that anymore. So they're taking away my rights. Like that's kind of a, an argument that gets made, but it, it really just doesn't, it doesn't make sense if you look at it too closely. And if anything, it's obviously it's offensive to people, right? Who, who have had to struggle in those situations because they've been discriminated against. And it's still like, even even making a law about it doesn't necessarily stop the discrimination from happening, right? Like, um, you know, this stuff happens off the books like all the time. It's just, you know, usually it doesn't always get to court because, you know, it's a hassle for some people. Some people just can't make the time to do that stuff. And, and people don't always have the evidence they need to prove those sort of things, even though they might know, you know, just from having conversations with people like, yeah, this is the situation that's going on, you know. probably would I want to add to that by saying I think from the year or so that I've been around this sort of uh, environment mm -hmm. at first uh, the, the channel wasn't up and running really um, I, I do see an increased tendency towards 
irrational conversation which wasn't there before and just be, it, it already existed but i just wasn't aware of it and now i've gone into much like this this channel i've gone through my own epistemology and tried to realize certain things that i've justified say eight years ago i haven't even thought of that particular thing i thought oh yeah that's that's a really stupid idea like it it, it doesn't <laughs> affect anything but it's like it's just it's it's something that sort of just hits you i, yeah. I completely get it well i i think what it is is when you get involved in commu in a community like this you kind of talk about stuff that the average person doesn't always talk about every day uh, you know, like like LGBTQ rights and stuff. Like, I don't think. I mean, maybe in Austin that gets brought up a lot more. But like, it does. It's not a conversation that happens every day at my work. It's not a conversation that happens every day in my family and other places like that. And so, like, when you get to communities like this where you're you're challenged more, like you you come to think about things more. Like, uh, I had, I would have never even considered the idea of being vegan, or you know, it would have even crossed my mind. Um, if I wasn't surrounded by other people who were asking me questions about that kind of stuff, like, well, hey, why aren't you vegan yet? Like, what's your thoughts on this? And that's like, yeah, I don't know. I, I hadn't examined it yet. So, um, bothering and, you with their ideology. Well, so, <laughs> you know, I don't see it that way. I, maybe I'm not jaded enough. And I know there's other people, <laughs> especially around here, who, who don't like having conversations about the vegan and stuff. I, 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 it hasn't bothered me enough to where, I, uh, I don't want to talk about it, surely. I think it's, um, there's definitely more for myself to learn about it as well. Uh, yeah, I, I got to talk to Cosmic Skeptic about it actually a little bit uh, when he was here a few weeks ago. And that made me think about some things. You know, he's got that video about that. You know, um, uh, it's, it's, it's just interesting ideas that, uh, you know, you wouldn't always consider because I get to surround myself by cool people and, and cool people get to call and ask about different things. So, you know. I uh, on that topic, I do have a response video to that specific. Yes, video. you do. Yeah, and uh, I never, I didn't get to. So, but you, you, yours was in response, kind of against Alex on that, right? Like you kind of pushed back a little bit. Mm, well, I pushed back. Yeah. I, I, just to clarify, I don't want to ruin the the video for everyone, but I ultimately the the hook, um, the bait is that. I think there will be a point in the future where carnivorism will be the most moral option. Whoa. Hot take. In our lives. Hot take. That's a hot take, David. <laughs> this, is, this is the point where I walk off and pretend that they... Oh, I've got internet connections. I've got a phone call. Uh, Sorry. I, well, okay. That would be the perfect time for me to ask you, like, why you think about that. <laughs> That's so interesting to me. I didn't realize that was your 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 position on that, but... This is right about the time to get to callers now. Uh, maybe it'll come up kind of organically in the show. Maybe if somebody calls in about it, we yeah. can talk about it more. Uh, 